This is Cybert signing into General's Evo on the map Forgotten Forest for some Red Alert 3 mod action and for our first 1v1 of 0 0.3 in the north as the purple GLA. This is Darkov. And in the south as the blue USA Super Weapons General, this is Cloud. We've definitely seen Cloud more recently in some version point three games, and I believe we've seen Darkov as well. But once again, I personally haven't seen a 1v1, so I'm kind of curious as to, as to how it goes. Once again, this is not general zero hour. So, uh, you know, maybe a 1v1 just isn't quite the same. Obviously, Gen Zero Hour is a super great 1v1 game. Maybe there are some matchups that are better than others, but as a general rule, it, it works really well as a 1v1 competitive game. Red Alert 2, on the other hand, doesn't work super well as a... It's not a super compelling 1v1 competitive game. So, we'll see how this particular version goes. Gen Evo has its pros and its cons, certainly. And I mean, as many of you have realized, it is not a copy of Gen Zero Hour. So, you know, it's a little, it's a little different. Now the Demo General, ooh, first time V does eject on out of there and the civilian structure is actually garrisoned by the rockets and they do clean up one of the technicals. Two other technicals do manage to escape. So we'll see if maybe these small groups of units are a bit more persistent in 1v1s than they are in team games or FFAs. Now one little bit of a difference here with the GLA demo is you do have uh, flak tanks and instead of quad cannons. And you do also have bomb cars. We'll see if those things actually come into play. Of course, the EMP Patriot missile system is brought over from General Zero Hour in the Super Weapons General. And of course, we also do have a Paladin coming right out of the gate, which is certainly a surprise from Cloud if you are thinking of General's Zero Hour. Oil Derrick in the north has been captured and the one in the south both by Cloud. So he does have that bit of an advantage. And boy, the dark purple and the dark blue definitely a bit difficult to see on the minimap as this Toxin Tractor clears out that building. But the laser lock from that Missile Defender does catch the Toxin Tractor. The harassment keeps up. Darkov cleans up, I think, two in total supply trucks from our USA player. So USA, he's got both of the oil derricks, but his supply trucks aren't working quite at top efficiency as he would like couple more Humvees being added on, as well as a Sentry Drone. We'll see how much this is a tank-based composition versus a Humvee-based composition for Cloud. A lot of technicals, which I guess does feel a bit like Gen Zero Hour. We don't have any of the additional units, and right into the palace, so relatively quick tech up, not a big expansion. Darkov is happy to play this on one base for the current moment. A lot of RPG troopers, but really only the Paladins and the Technicals were engaging in that first battle. RPG troopers now trying to get in on the action as the Sentry Guns and the Paladins joining forces to try and defend this USA base. Darkov might be able to do a bit of damage to the buildings as the USA forces are backing off, a little bit scared of the sheer number of RPG troopers. Cloud was not prepared for the infantry boost. He can deal with the technicals no problem, but the RPG troopers are a bit more difficult for the Paladins to deal with. Uh, looks like another EMP battery is coming up here as the Patriot missile is going to be online relatively soon. The barracks getting eliminated, so it's going to be just down to these Paladins to try and hold off this front line. These Sentry drones adding a little bit of extra beef to Cloud's army, but not enough against this many RPG troopers. And Darkov is just keeping up the aggression. Constant technicals, and finally the EMP Patriot comes online, and Darkov's assault will be slowed a little bit here, but it just buys a bit of time, and Cloud is going to need a tougher defense than that to stop this parade push that is just constantly crushing across the map. 
and this exposed power plant might be the next target of these GLA forces. Those RPG troopers making short work of that cold fusion reactor. Another Paladin does go down, and Cloud is just getting pulled apart here, even capturing that civilian structure in the middle of the map. Darkov looks like he has got this one sewn up fairly well. A Humvee with those RPG troopers, those missile defenders that we saw from earlier, making its way to the other side of the map, and now the command center is under threat as Darkov continues his assault, bursting through the forces of Cloud, and finally the RPG troopers get largely cleaned up, and the technicals get pushed back. Cloud has found the damage. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, no oil derricks have been captured by Darkov, so his economy has been severely hampered by by the loss of the two supply stashes in his main base. Missile Defender is going to trade out their last couple of rockets against these technicals, taking one more technical down with them and not quite able to eliminate any more. A big halt in the production of Darkov, cutting off that economy. And now these technicals going to have to eat through these sentry drones, which really doesn't take very long, considering these are double vent, single vent, and heroic technicals here, able to eat through those. Double War Factory is going to be the follow-up by Cloud. He's trying desperately to get more defenses online, and he is going pure sentries all the way. He has not rebuilt that barracks. He is just going to stick with the War Factory, which for the current moment is going to allow him to deal with these technicals. If he could just close the distance on them. He would actually be able to do some damage. Good unit rotation coming in here from Darkov. The focus firing maybe could be a little bit better from Cloud to try and take down those weakened technicals first, but Darkov is doing a pretty good job of keeping these stronger full health technicals on the front lines. Barracks getting added on. War Factory will get eliminated. Whatever was about to finish out of that War Factory does not finish. An additional EMP Patriot getting added on in these technicals trying to rotate, but they are at the edge of the map. And if only they had more space for maneuverability, they would have been able to keep up that assault, dancing around the buildings, ever evading the tanks of Cloud. And now going for the oil derricks, a good choice by Darkov to try and cut down the economy of Cloud as he rebuilds his own economy back at home. Oil derricks do have a bit of an explosion radius there, but all of these technicals look like they were far enough back. So Cloud will have just these two supply centers, which are already down to just 10 grand a piece. Barracks being added on does allow these missile defenders to be mixed in with the army comp of Cloud. Darkov going for the quick cleanup of both oil derricks. Not going to let Cloud's economy recover with the help of the oil derricks. One last 200 credits out of that oil derrick. There aren't a uh, ton of easy-to-take expansions on this map. It really is like three expansions, and then it's into your secondary economy after that. Toxin Tractor clears out the building very nicely, and the Paladin numbers are actually pretty healthy, but of course we've seen in the past the GLA technicals are just able to outmaneuver the Paladins, and in some cases, that's all you really need to do is outmaneuver them and dance around while you kill their buildings. Controlling the battlefield will be very important for Cloud as he is trying to shore up his defenses before his opponent actually shows up to his base. Airfield being added on, so we do get to potentially see the Alpha Raptors and the Alpha Auroras being added on. And in some of those 2v2s, those Alpha Auroras have huge splash damage potential to clean up these lighter health units on the ground. An Avenger being added in, and it feels like Darkov had a real opportunity to potentially end the game. He killed the Oil Derricks, and that was maybe a mistake. We'll see how he's able to deal with this army, but it feels like Cloud has got a really good setup with this army. We'll see how the mix of RPG troopers and technicals does against this mixed USA army. Technicals just go for the crush there. Every single... Ah, Warthog's actually going to be targeting down... Okay, they're going for the barracks there. They're going to be able to eliminate that very swiftly. It looked like they were about to pummel their own sentry drones 
for just a moment. The technical is getting closer and closer. The shoe is on the other foot now as Cloud is the one who's about to start the kicking. These technicals do not have the health to stand up on their own against these Paladins. Rocket Buggy's being added on, but they are a hit and run kind of a unit. And I don't know if he's actually got the upgrades for the Rocket Buggies. It looks like the answer so far is no. The Paladins could just go right for the arms dealer. Cutting off the War Factory will cut off all of the production of Darkov. Darkov desperately trying to lead Cloud away from his front door, trying to draw this USA force further, ever further away. Another Paladin does go down. The hit and run is continuing, and Cloud might just have to kind of sacrifice this army to kill the War Factory. I'm not sure if he can keep up this hit and run forever because the uh, the rocket buggies outrange him. He really needs the aircraft here to support this army and deal with the rocket buggies. Sentry drone breaks off to try and deal with the rocket buggies. It looks like the command center will be the next target as Cloud tries to close in on that. He ignores the supply centers for the current moment, trying to pivot around the building slowly but surely, looking for some kind of an opening. The barracks gets eliminated, and that might be the last structure of Darkov. He might just be stuck with these technicals as his last units. He's nearly crushed the army of Cloud, and there it goes. A war factory managed to sneak out for Darkov. So he does still have the hope of production and the last Paladin goes down. No aircraft on the deck from Cloud. He is depleted in both of these ore mines and he does have the strategy center up and running. There is a supply stash up here with still 30 grand, but he has not expanded to that area. Both of these are just about depleted, only 2,400 left in there. And Darkov barely managing to take the win in that battle, but he took some heavy losses for sure. He's got the he's got the war factory, so he's still all right. He still has a chance of taking this game. And it looks like he's got his hit and runs forces figured out. The missile defenders just get annihilated there. One rocket buggy inches a little bit too close to those USA defenses and that one rocket buggy gets caught and killed. Darkov skating away. Ah, the first Alpha Aurora comes through and it looks like it's gonna barely miss those rocket buggies, but it really means they have to keep their run active in hit and run. The Alpha Aurora just does insane damage to, uh, to anything that's sitting still. Anything that can't quite move fast enough. And ooh, a big miss there, as you can see. He was trying to predict where that army would go. Sentry guns trying to trade out against the rocket buggies and buy more time for Cloud. His first Chinook is out, his first Comanche, rather, as he is going to be able to thin out some of these technicals. I think he maybe only got one technical there, but he's going to be able to push this army back. Trying desperately to clean up the technicals, but the technical trades one for one, and here's the first flak tank emerging. Kind of expected to see that a bit earlier. And ooh, the first flak tank goes down as the second one emerges from that war factory, and you can see the devastation rain from those Alpha Auroras. If he had two of those, Cloud would be in an even more powerful position. He is just wheeling and dealing with the smallest amount of units that he possibly can. No flak tank with this army, so it's all about the hit and run, all about the mobility, the keep moving aspect of this army. Flak tanks there in the middle of the map. The first paladin emerges in the last couple of minutes and it immediately gets shut down by those, by those buggies. Those rocket buggies, when they are well controlled, they are absolute monsters against those single heavier targets like the Paladins. EMP missile system coming online. Barracks is here. Another flak tank does go down, but there are two fresh ones here, and that Alpha Aurora got eliminated. He could not last against three flak tanks. And the Comanche coming around, but there's two flak tanks here to edge that guy out. EMP catches one of them. Aurora Raptor comes through. I'm not sure if he actually hit anything. Flak Tank does clean up every single uh, rifleman there. Uh, what? 
<laughs> what was that? He just bombed his own airfield there. As uh, I think that was a Moab just eliminated the airfield of Cloud. I'm not sure what that was. Flak tanks moving forward and RPG buggies able to outrange the forces of Cloud. Cloud restarts his airfield, trying desperately to hold on his second war factory, brings forward a paladin. He's able to clean up one of the flak tanks, but the second one holding on with dear life. The rocket buggy's edging too close to those defenses and they get cleaned up, but they barely secure the kill against that paladin. Once again, the air force is coming online for Cloud relatively soon here. The rocket buggies inept against the air forces, but, of, but at least they can tear down the rest of the base. Ooh, one more buggy pays the price there as just barely Cloud gets the laser lock on that buggy. Selling off whatever that was to try and pull something online, selling off that supply center to try and get something online. And the, I'm not sure what the, what the Alpha Raptor, what is the attack supposed to be? Because this guy doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. He just barely isn't able to do anything. The Comanche comes online. I think maybe Cloud will be able to finally kill this rocket buggy. And there it is. The last rocket buggy goes down. And I think that is it for Darkov. I think finally he is out. The GG gets called and a 1v1 definitely has a very different look, at least from these two players, than the team games. A lot more like classic Zero Hour. It's still not, it's still not Zero Hour, but it is, it does look a lot more like classic Zero Hour. And a great game between these two, GLA Demo and USA Super Weapons General. That will do it for this game, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cybert, signing out.